everybody. Welcome back to my kitchen. It is now day like 38 or something, or maybe even 40 of being in quarantine. I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and sane. And I have really enjoyed watching you guys getting um, on the whole chef dev train, you guys have been cooking up some of my recipes and posting them and tagging me in it and it's honestly so rewarding. I love seeing your guys' creations and seeing your spins on some of the recipes. So thank you for following along. Today, I am making something that I made on my stories on my Instagram a couple weeks back and a lot of you requested that I do a vlog on it. So what we're making today is beer pretzels. I hadn't made pretzels ever, basically, just because I assumed that they were really difficult, but they're not too hard. Um, and these beer ones are really good because it gives it that like hoppy kind of beer, I don't know, beer flavor. <laughs> and who doesn't love beer? So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna be serving it with a queso dip. I'm gonna make it a little spicy. You could not make it spicy. You could do uh, cinnamon sugar and do it in like a savory way, but I'm gonna do it in the salty way. So just make sure you have a mixer with a dough hook. You could try to do this by hand, but it might be a little difficult. So we're gonna hop right in. Um, ingredients wise, I've got water, brown sugar, active dry yeast, Beer, you could use any kind of beer you like. I'm just using what I have in the fridge, which is my husband's, Estella. Um, this would be great with pumpkin beer. Never tried it with ginger beer. Give it a go. Um, beer, butter, salt, flour, and then baking soda, which is what you boil the pretzels in. And, um, oh, that's my dog's doggy, doggy doorbell when he has to go outside. No potty, Winston. Uh, eggs to brush over the pretzel before you bake them and salt. And then for the queso, I'll get to that when we get to the queso. So first things first, we're gonna combine warm water, brown sugar, and flour and yeast in the bowl. Now I am having this because last time I made it, it made so many pretzels and um, which is great, but I'm just gonna have it because it's a little snack. So I'm gonna take, it usually calls for a half cup, but I'm having it, so I'm doing a fourth a cup of warm water. Then I'm gonna do uh, three tablespoons, oops, sorry, three tablespoons of brown sugar, or two tablespoons that I'm having, so one. So one tablespoon of brown sugar. Brown sugar, the yeast, I'm gonna, it calls for, so basically, teaspoon of active dry yeast. This pack I actually opened last time I made them and I just saved it. Perfect, right into the warm water. You wanna make sure your water is warm because it activates that yeast, even though it's called active dry yeast. Um, and then flour. No, sorry, water, brown sugar, and yeast in the bowl. Excuse me if I just get super jumbled because nowadays I don't even know what day it is and just quarantine life. So I've got my brown sugar, yeast, and water in a bowl and I'm gonna just mix it. Sorry. The dough hook sometimes doesn't reach the bottom of the bowl, so that was why I lifted it up, but I realized that it wasn't a good idea. You just need to mix it until it's combined, so you can use a spoon or a whisk. And then you're gonna let it sit for five minutes. There we go. Which allows the yeast to kind of activate. So, I'll see you guys back in five minutes. Okay, so it's been five minutes and we're gonna now combine our butter, beer, flour, and salt. Now, I didn't have unsalted butter, so I'm gonna be doing salted butter and just adding a little bit less salt afterwards. Recipe usually calls for four and a half cups of flour, but I'm using it, so I'm gonna do two and a quarter cup to the mixer. That's about right. Flour. And then salt, usually it's like a two teaspoons, but I've already got salted butter, so I'm gonna just do one teaspoon of salt. It's also supposed to be half, so I'm gonna do like a half a teaspoon. And then my melted butter, it's a half a stick. And then my beer, which is usually a cup of beer, but I'm passing it, so we're gonna do half cup, a little frothy. 
There's the beer. Just get that mixer going, medium speed. Pretzels aren't hard, right? Just scrape the sides down, kind of, so the flour goes down. Kind of turn it up. Now this is where you need to check if your dough seems too wet or not, and if it's too wet and too sticky to handle, and add more flour. But this actually seems totally fine. I'm gonna take a little flour, and then I'm gonna just take the dough out of there, and roll it in the flour, and you're gonna just knead it into a ball. And it's not hard. I always thought kneading dough would be like the hard part, and this is actually super easy. Curl it under, and dab it in some flour so it doesn't stick. So, you have your ball. Now you're gonna coat this with a little bit of canola oil or olive oil, which is what I have. Sprinkle it, kind of get it on all sides. Grab a little towel and you're gonna just cover it and you're gonna let it rise for an hour. So I'll see you guys then. Okay guys, welcome back. So my dough has basically doubled, uh, not even really doubled, but risen. It's supposed to double, but it's risen a decent amount. Um, for you to see. And now is the fun part. We get to roll it out. Okay, but first things first, I need you guys to fill up a pot of water and start boiling it because that's what you're gonna do with the pretzels. And preheat an oven to 425 degrees and grab a baking sheet with some parchment paper because that is what you will cook the pretzels on. Let me just get... So I just got this so I can scoop the pretzels out. And then I got this so I can cut the dough and roll the dough. Got my egg wash also on the side for after after you, you boil, kind of boil them for a couple seconds, you egg wash. I'm gonna take my dough, cut off a little piece. I'm gonna make one kind of like big pretzel just to show you guys like a pretzel shape. But the rest, I found that I really like doing pretzel bites. Um, they're just easier to eat, and it's not like I have to commit to eating like a whole big pretzel. But I'll show you guys how to make a pretzel if you're looking to do a pretzel shape. So, roll it out. It's a thin log. What you're gonna do, is after you've rolled it out, you're gonna turn it around, and then you're gonna crisscross, and you make a little pretzel shape, and then kind of push down the ends, curl them under so that they don't come undone. They're kind of fragile when you put them in the water, so be careful. But look, <gasps> pretzel. Yay! So we've got our pretzel. I'm gonna just continue on, and I'm gonna make pretzel bites as I said. So I've got one pretzel, but I'm gonna just make pretzel nibs. I'm like Auntie Anne's up in here. So we've got our long rope. You kind of want to do it the same size just because they'll bake differently. It's kind of like cooking gnocchis. I just did this a lot with my friend Olivia Coco where we made gnocchi. It took us like nearly two hours, but they were so good. Roll it out. I feel like this is much easier than what I had imagined pretzels to be. You can do anything. You can make a heart, you could do like a little twist, you could do a pretzel braid. Just do whatever you want. Pretzel sticks, like you could dip in the queso. Ready? So aside from the aside from the wait time for the dough to rise, it really doesn't take that long to make pretzels because the cook time is actually pretty fast. I mean, with big pretzels, it'd be like 15, 20 minutes till they're golden brown, but these little pretzel bites will be pretty fast, to be honest. Check on my water. Get that turned up high so it's ready to bake, or cook, rather. Just 
leave those there and I'll pop them right in the water. So come back over. Okay, so my water is basically to boil. I'm adding in some baking soda, but slowly because it will, oh, last time I did this, it literally all exploded in my whole oven and stove was a mess. Slowly add the baking soda. Delicately put a pretzel on here. You can just drop it in because, but I feel like it cooks evenly and the shape is better if I put it on here first like this and kind of like let it go gradually. Um, it just keeps the shape only for 30 seconds. So as that cooks, I'm gonna just add in some more of these little guys. This is kind of what gets gives that pretzel that like brown color to it and that taste of pretzely. I'm gonna dunk it in so it cooks on all sides. Okay, so that's been about 30 seconds. And then that's it. Then you're gonna egg wash it and bake it. I'm just gonna do the rest. Got a little nib in there. Do the rest of this dough. Take out what's done. Put it on my baking sheet lined. They kind of puff up as well as you can see in this little baking soda situation. Now, if I leave them in longer for 30 seconds, it'll be fine, but, because it is kind of hard to see what's been cooked and what's not been cooked, but just kind of guess. Okay, and then I just have the ones over there on the table and that's it. Now I've seen people do this same concept with pizza dough. So basically you just take like frozen or raw pizza dough and cut it up and then do this whole baking powder or baking soda situation, which would be a lot easier because you wouldn't even have to make the dough or let it rise. And it's basically pretzels in like 20 minutes. So that would be a good idea. I've not tried it, but if you don't have yeast or flour or any of that stuff, maybe you have pizza dough and it would kind of be the same concept. Okay, that finishes. I'm just gonna separate over here. That's definitely good. So turn the heat off, put it on my baking sheet, and move this to the side. So just separating them so I can coat them with egg wash, sprinkle the salt. They don't grow too much in the oven, not like cookies, but you do not want them to touch because they will kind of grow together. That looks separated enough, right? Watch like them all grow and stick together and be one big pretzel. I'm impatient, so let's risk it and see. I'll let you guys know if they need to be more separated. Now we've got our egg wash here, which I've just beaten up and I'm gonna wash over the pretzels. Okay, so I think I've coated all of them with the egg wash. Now, if you have pretzel salt, great. I don't, so I'm gonna just use coarse sea salt. Um, this is also the time if you wanna do cinnamon sugar, don't salt it, and then when they're done cooking, you'll toss them in some cinnamon and sugar. Alrighty, now I'm gonna put them in the 425 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes or until they go golden brown. So, while the pretzels are cooking, I'm gonna make the queso, which is just butter, cream cheese, I'll let that melt down first. I'm kind of freestyling with whatever cheese I have currently. Um, last time I did like a Gouda vibe, but I don't have Gouda, so I'm gonna do like a creamy mozzarella kind of pizza blend because I have a pizza blend shredded cheese um, that's got like Asiago, provolone, um, and everything in it, so I'll just do that. I'm just gonna melt this butter first with the cream cheese. Got some whole milk here on the side. It's gonna kind of thin it out, make it very silky. I'm gonna do like a half a cup to start. I might actually pour some of the remainder of the beer that I used in. So I'm gonna like part milk, part beer. You don't want this to burn, so kind of keep stirring it. Here's the pizza blend cheese, mozzarella, provolone, asiago. I'm kind of eyeballing this, um, just seeing how the texture comes out before I do anything. Might take some time. Now to thicken it up, if you feel like your cheese sauce isn't thick enough, before the milk, and I guess even after, you can add some flour, and that'll really thicken it up. For some saltiness, I have a little bit of like Parmesan here. Throw that in there. And now all you gotta do is just stir, stir, stir. While that's melting, let me grab the cayenne. 
Oh, that's paprika. That would have been good. Okay, cayenne, and that's gonna add heat. If you have like chilies or chilies in a can, that would be delicious. To add a little spice, stir it up. It's gonna be interesting to see if the if the uh, mozzarella melts, or the, sorry, that was kind of a lot of cayenne and I'm scared, so I'm gonna take this out. See if this big Parmesan wedges melt. They seem like they are, so. It smells like pretzels. Check on your pretzels too, guys. Just make sure, yeah, those have got a ways to go. That's only been eight minutes. I'm gonna bump it to 15 minutes. Add in more cheese. Got some more cream cheese here as well. Might have gone heavy on the milk and the beer. We'll just have a lot of cheese sauce, guys. Guys, look at what I just found. Kraft American Singles, which is gonna basically melt into deliciousness. Okay, I'm not normally a fan of processed cheese, but we're really going all out for this pretzel situation. Cheddar cheese would also be great in this. I actually don't eat cheddar cheese. It really hurts my stomach. But if I had cheddar, I would eat it. So it's getting thicker now. You can see it's not as liquidy. Now, for what I like to a little wrought iron skillet of some sorts in the oven, um, just so it keeps the cheese dip warm while you're serving it and it doesn't harden. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and that's gonna heat up. And that way when I pour this cheese dip in, it gets, um, and it stays, it just stays really warm. What would also be delicious in this cheese is a little bit of Dijon mustard. I did that last time. I'm gonna go super, super simple. If you guys wanna have all these cheeses, like I said, just melt some cheddar cheese, throw in some milk, butter, call it a day. Okay, so I added in just a tablespoon of flour just to kind of help thicken this sauce up. Um, and the pretzels are looking good. So I'm going to take those out. Well, take out the sauce thing here. Don't touch it, it's gonna be hot. Take those pretzels out. Whoa, give them a little feel. See, they look pretty done. Amazing, put those to the side to cool. And then got my cheese sauce here, which I'm gonna serve up in this little bowl. I'm gonna use a soup ladle <laughs> to serve this up. Alrighty, we're ready to serve. And voila, there it is guys. Got our spicy cheese sauce and our Beautiful. little pretzel bites and the pretzel. Let's give it a try. So, let's try this baby. Oh my God. Oh, it's so good. And just have cheese, perfectly thick. Not too thick. Oops. Devin always makes a mess when she eats <laughs> and cooks. It's a disaster. Oh my god. Wow. Try it. The cheese sauce is hot. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a nice tender piece. <laughs> that nice drip. It's I gave so... the drip a 6.4. You're such a hard grader. Yeah, look, you see that little cling? It's still clean, a little piece. I heard 10. No, that's like a 6.2. If it would just have a natural drip, look at it, there it goes. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it a 7.2. I'll give it an extra point for that. Mm. Good. Yeah, it's a solid press. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so excited that I did this for you guys. I hope you try this at home. It's not hard. Swear, try it with pizza dough um, if you don't have all the ingredients to make the dough. And yeah, it's a delicious little snack. So I hope you guys are staying safe, healthy, and I'll talk to you guys next time.